So, uh, Kithi, how are you feeling? Do you are you ready for the interview? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. So, I'll just share my screen with you now. Okay. Okay. Um, now, the problem is this: you have this, there's a old problem of a. Have you heard of the Josephus problem? No. So there was a general named Josephus. Uh, and he was fighting the Romans, but the Romans beat him. Uh, that's expected because you know they are a very powerful civilization. Uh, what happened is Josephus was standing with n of his colleagues in a cave. So in this case, you can see that n is equal to six, and mm -hmm. the Romans threatened to kill them all. They, they were hiding in a cave. The Romans said, "We are going to burn you unless you surrender." Mm -hmm. So Josephus then said that, "Okay, uh, you know, we should kill ourselves." But uh, committing suicide is a problem, so they chose a particular magic number k. Let's say k here is equal to 3 uh, and a person has a sword. Now every third person from this person will be killed. So person number 1 takes the sword, 1, 2, 3, kills person number 4 and mm -hmm. the sword now goes here. Okay. Okay, uh, now person number 5 has the sword, they kill person number 3. 1, 2, 3. Person number 2 is now dead. Sword passes here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, they do the same thing, they repeat the cycle. 1, 2, 3. Person number 1 is now dead. Sword passes all the way over here. Back to 3. Uh, they kill 1, 2, 3. So they commit suicide here. We don't care about their sentiments. Uh, the sword passes to person number 5. 1, 2, 3. They kill person number 6 and 5 is the survivor. Okay. Okay. So they are standing in a circle. They have a sword. Skip K people and they die. And the circle keeps reducing in size. And the sword also keeps passing. This is the question. Uh, usually what happens is people ask who is the last survivor. But in our case, mm -hmm. what we are going to do is we are going to look at two types of queries. Okay. Let's uh, go all the way back to the fresh start and say this word is here. There's two types of queries you have, Q. Uh, the first one is kill the next person. Okay, so if I say this, if I run this command first, then if first person is having this word n equal to 6, k equal to 3, you're going to kill person number 4. Because that was 1, 2, 3. Okay. This is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And the other type of query is, uh, so this is type query one. Second type of query is uh, in the range of left to right indices, find me the count of people who are alive. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, if let's say, like we said, person number four is dead. Now, if the mm -hmm. second query is of type two, and I say that from three to five, give me the number of people who are alive. So that is this section and your answer should be two people alive. Okay. Right. So two types of queries. Um, the first one does not have any result that you need to print out. But I mean, maybe you need to maintain some state so that the uh -huh. second type of query is answered correctly whenever we ask. And Q and, okay. N, yeah, Q and N are rather large numbers. So we want to optimize this. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, how is the input given to us? The input is given to you as K. Um, let us assume that the first person is always holding the sword initially. So index mm -hmm. one has the sword. Uh, N and K will be given to you. And Q will be given as if it is type one, then you will get uh, nothing else along with it. And there will be type 2 query, you will get left and right indices. Okay. Got it. Check it. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, another question. So left and right, can it also be like uh, from 6 to 2? Like, can it go like that? Yeah. No, we are we are keeping it simple for now. Uh, it is uh, left is always smaller than right. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. 
So just thinking out loud right now. Uh, okay. So I, I have to optimize both the queries, right? So to optimize the second one, uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, keep another vector. Uh, I'm going to deal with vectors. I'm going to code in C++. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to uh, uh, keep another vector, which will be sort of like prefix sum that how many people from one till, uh, till this index I have been killed. Okay. Or, or are alive. Are alive. Okay. And uh, so whenever I have to uh, return the range L to R, I'll have to basically return that suppose vector is called alive. So it will be alive of R minus alive of L. But what that does is it makes the first query expensive because every time you kill, you have to update all the uh, numbers on this, right? So uh, Again, if I have to optimize the kill, the range might become a bit uh, uh, not that efficient. So what would you rather have more efficient, the first query or the second query? Okay, that's a really, really good observation. It, uh, it It's a fundamental problem of this problem. Uh, it is basically, if you kill someone, you are making n skips. So I, I think one of the things you mentioned was a vector. Uh, were you thinking of... Uh, uh, and you were storing what exactly in that vector? How many people are alive till that index? Okay, okay. So you are storing some sort of a prefix sum of alive people? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's a fundamental problem uh, with this. On purpose, Joseph's problem is, is pretty good there because if you actually use this, your queries are extremely fast. Uh, your range queries are extremely fast, which is left to right. Yes. Order of one. It's essentially order of one. But the kill kill will become expensive. It will become order of n. Expensive. Okay, kill is order n. Um, so how will you handle a kill in this prefix sum thing? Uh, okay, so this, this prefix sum will be separate only. Okay, but uh, okay, maybe I can use the prefix sum itself to kill. Uh, just one second. Suppose kill is K. So what I have to do is I have to find, suppose I have two pointers and I can uh, say that, you know, the difference between the prefix sum should be K for those two pointers. So I can move the two pointers accordingly uh, such that the difference between the prefix sum at those two pointers is K. Okay. Okay. So let us say you have prefix sums of uh, on the how many people are alive on the left hand side or right hand side you want? Left hand side. Okay, how many people are alive on the left? It doesn't matter, but. Right, yeah, you actually. You mirror it, but uh, in terms of thinking, uh, which would you. Uh, left hand side because it makes range easier to handle. Like How many people are alive on the left hand side? So initially that would be zero, uh, then let's say one, then let's say one, then let's say two, two, uh, then three, four. Okay, which means. The original array here will be 0, uh, no, no, not 0, that will be 1 alive, uh, 0, uh, yeah. Yeah. So by 1 you mean alive and by 0 you mean dead. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's how you would prefer it, right? Prefix sums. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this will give us this array, no? Uh, one. Oh, normally prefix sums are. I'm not done this way. Normally it will be zero here, and then this will become one. Your second array that you have written itself is essentially prefix sum, I think. The this array, I was I was actually trying to find the original array from this. Uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. I, is this the correct? Right. Yes. Okay. So now, uh, yeah, how are you going to find the next person to kill? Let's say k is equal to 3. Uh, and let's say I am pointing here. So I am thinking. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, so I'm thinking right now, like, a, a possible solution could be that I don't need the original array at all. Maybe I could just use the prefix array itself to even kill the person. 
maybe okay so uh, suppose uh, so i am at that uh, 0 1 2 3 third index which is 2 right so now i want that the difference between this so if this is my left pointer then my right pointer should be such that you know suppose k value is 3 so it should be 2 plus 3 5 yeah right so uh, till 4 i'll go and then i will see that i need one more so i'll go back to the starting and then i'll say okay one more so that will become okay that's interesting that's interesting so that is one way to do it yeah uh, and you're all at what speed are you moving from 2 to if you're searching for uh, you know you'll go to 4 and then you'll from left hand side to this range you'll go to 1 how how fast are you going to do it right i can actually do binary search over there because this is going to be sorted right right so in log in time you're finding the the person to kill is it mm-hmm. okay so log in time you are finding uh, a kill uh, this is not probably completing the operation but your queries are like really fast queries are order one uh, you are finding the person to kill how much time does it take to actually kill the person like setting this okay so yeah ah uh, order of n because i have to update all of them right so order of n okay so till now uh, like the order n will eat into the log in time uh, and order 1 so okay this is like highly optimized prefix sums unfortunately uh, order n is needed because prefix sums by definition if you have a updation then they require change okay okay so do would you rather have me optimize that like not use the prefix sum yeah no not use the prefix sum would be a good idea so what i am looking for is some sort of a could you look at this and think in terms of some other data structure uh maybe uh, yeah something which breaks things into pieces and then takes those okay yeah uh a heap uh parity queue right uh, i i think you are heading in the right direction uh, you are a parity queue would be a heap um n- not not necessarily something which can break it into sections there's a few ways in which you can do that you can take a let's say an array uh, you are you are basically taking the original circle and you are breaking it into sections so this, this seems like sharding <laughs> yeah yeah uh, in fact in fact uh, you can think of sharding as a circle or you can think of sharding as maybe some other method so uh, could you tell me like what what would you try if you had a range query to answer what kind of data structures would you try segmentary okay yeah segmentary is interesting uh, i think yeah in this question that's a interesting one segment 3 do you want to try this data structure or do you want to try something else no it's not it's not necessarily segment 3 uh, you need a range range query right so it can be segment 3 uh, it can be simple tree also which you augment um yeah these are these are rather large hints but uh, there is also other range data, uh, range techniques that you might want to use so a segment tree like you said is actually taking the entire segment and then breaking it into smaller segments then recursively making it you know uh, getting that so that should right. work uh, but it might be a little complex but it sh- should work do you want to we have we have half an hour left do you want me to focus on that or what do you like you tell as an interview what do you prefer what okay how about a more uh, uh, let's say powerful technique uh, because segmentary actually involves a lot of theoretical knowledge which you may not prepare for in an interview uh, something else a tree can you can you think of a tree which is going to help you look at this range in c++ can you think of any uh, stl library which which you can use um, maybe you can, you can think about the internal data structure and augment that um, we may not go into the code for it but like the the code would be much more interesting if you are answering this code this is highly optimized this kind of code is what i'm looking for 
but uh, just for a solution just for a strong hire <laughs> this is what i'm looking for like hire versus strong hire is what i'm talking about i'm thinking about like sets in c++ because they are already uh, like self balanced uh, bsts right so uh, i'm thinking of those right now uh, because the uh, like considering that we have half an hour i might not have time to implement the entire segment tree so uh, right now considering balanced bst for that so that i can use the already implemented structure so uh in a set what uh see as we put things they are already uh sorted right so i am thinking if uh my re- if i have this prefix sum instead of that if i have a set so a set but what will i store in the set can you go back up a bit like show me the array yeah so here okay so uh, also the numbers that i have is like 1 to n itself right uh, right so if my numbers are 1 to n and then i'm just killing them right uh, so if i remove a particular uh, number from a set it will by itself do it in log n yes yes right so that is a better way to do right in an optimized way to do uh yes 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 so removals are uh, log n uh, um finding now the range query right so for the range query i'm thinking actually i'm not sure if they are just log n the thing is you need to find a particular person with a sword and a kth person from them and kth person from them okay i'm thinking maybe a combination of two data structures like uh, for example we sometimes use a heap plus an unordered map right so i'm thinking a combination of two data structures because uh, see uh, set can be to store to just kill the person so it will just kill and it will have that but my uh, it will also tell the size right uh like the say i can i know that how many people are alive so maybe an unordered map can be used to see clearly segment trees would be the best way to handle but i'm thinking how i can use stl right now and uh, do it right right so, do you do you want to uh... so because the set might be something which is like you need to augment it uh, there is uh, yeah how about okay i'll i'll uh, let me see if you are able to answer it this way this is a little bit of the interviewer kind of telling their part of the solution and forcing you to think this way but uh, let's try this out let's mm-hmm. say you have your original array and you break it into segments like this mm-hmm. and then you keep a count of the number of people alive in every segment is this making sense that's the concept of segmentary right uh, segmentary or maybe you are you are doing some sort of decomposition of that uh, mm-hmm. you have let's say every every block has b people in it initially okay when you kill a person you basically start from a particular pointer a sword and then if i tell you that hey k is equal to so and so then you need to do a right traversal of this block if this k is greater than b then you know that there's no point actually staying in this block just jump to the next one i can actually keep my block as of k size itself you can keep it a block of k size itself okay that would be one idea uh, do you want to do that i'm not very sure what if k is equal to 2 or uh, you know after killing a person anyway the number of skips also that you want is high ah uh, so that was my next question that uh, what uh, like do i have something like that n and k will be how close or can k be very small and n be very huge is that possible yeah no k will be somewhere between 2 to n so and n can be how huge uh, n is uh, 1 lakh 10 is to the 5 okay then it doesn't make sense to have it here yeah. yeah okay right right 
but if you break it into these blocks can you tell me like how are, how is it helping like uh, to some extent this of killing is getting a little faster you are skipping b people uh, mm-hmm. and then maybe after you skip b people what what do you do with k here like how many people do you need to skip now initially your sword is here you need to go and kill the k person from here the live person uh, you found the mm-hmm. count here is b from this point to here is b uh, what are you going to do now so now i can just know that my this kid person will be in which segment right so i can just switch uh, to that particular segment and uh, so for every segment that you skip you just keep subtracting b from it and you look for the k minus bth person here if if k minus b is still larger than b then you just keep skipping i can just take the mod and go suppose i had to skip like five b's instead of going one by one i can actually just take the mod and see and then just go to the sixth one okay that is an interesting approach but now uh, then that means that you have b people in the block so how are you are you going to decide the number of people in the block initially or are you going to be uh, changing the blocks as you kill people hmm. if i So, uh, is this a binary array of zeros and ones, or are you like putting indexes in this block? So initially, I was thinking of putting all the alive people in the block so that I can just skip B people and go. Uh, but uh, having binaries makes more sense because uh, I don't think I'm optimizing that much by taking the mod. It's fine if I go within the block, right? So it will become order of B, uh, like. the uh, order of number of blocks plus like going through a particular block so that will become order of uh, number of blocks plus order of block right? okay okay that is something like this is it yes okay okay uh, that will be killing a person that is killing okay so killing is pretty fast now now you're not worried uh, about killing mm-hmm. you actually pass the sword pointer also and you're you're actually doing it really fast what about querying from a left to right range okay. hmm so uh, i'm thinking that they can maybe can be another array uh, which will be uh, of b size and i can have the number of uh, alive people in a particular block right? yes no, you need that for a kill also no like if you want yeah. to skip an array yeah 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 right so again that will also become order of b plus n my b so what will happen uh, i know that okay uh, range query you need from l to r right so uh, suppose i am at the second block so i know that my l starts from the second block because okay first block uh, l like how many people are killed in the first block we already know right so i know that my l to r is within the second block or second to third block so now i just need to travel to the second or the third block so that also becomes order of b plus n by b okay okay so if uh, if this is your right block and this is your left block then what you're telling me is if left starts here and right start ends here then you straight away traverse this distance to get this block count ha huh. and then i will already know the number of alive people in these two right so that will be order of one because i have it stored in the other array okay so now you are jumping from block to block just taking this count value every time you kill a person you reduce the count value by one yes okay okay now then you finally go over here and you say that oh my right is uh, having intersection so you do a single traverse here yes okay okay and that is order order b this is also order b and you have order n by b here skipping blocks one by one yes. okay so your kill and query are both order b plus n by b okay yeah yeah actually that is extremely fast it looks like depending on what size of b you choose what what b size yes. should you choose here so now that depends on n and k right Does it depend on n and k? Like k, for example, we have already said is equal to two to n. So k, I mean, does your kill operation depend on k? Does my kill operation depend on k? Yeah. Does uh, I mean let's keep k aside for now because 
what you have done is you have clearly proved that this is the time complexity. K has right. nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now you need to optimize the size of this block. Right. Uh, should it be n dependent or should it be k dependent? This block. So this block that you are seeing is actually your comp time complexity is uh, not dependent on k. So in that way we are lucky. How do you uh, find the optimal size of B is what you care about? See, uh, I'm thinking because B is in numerator as well as in denominator. So at the top of my head, I'm thinking if B was something like root N, it would be like root N plus N upon root N. So that would become order of two root N, which is still very sufficient. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Uh, you're saying one possibility is order root n which is so every query would take order root n if i have 10 raised to power 5 queries and, and root n like we said n is 10 raised to power 5 so root n becomes 10 raised to power 2.5 so this is 10 raised to power 7.5 which is pretty good this can be done within one second in most mm -hmm. processes i think that is that is good enough okay i'll go ahead with root n yeah Yeah, yeah, I think uh, to avoid uh, like uh, making it very complex, I can just, you know, make sure it is an integer value like root n plus like whatever the seal value of root n. Yes, yes, yes. That makes sense. That would be the right thing to do. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is uh, an optimized solution. This is giving you Q root n as the time complexity, which is quite optimized. This is good. But uh, can you write some code uh, now, Kirti, for the for the problem just using prefix sums? You don't need to do binary search. If you can, it's OK. But uh, can I see your coding now uh, in terms of OK? Yeah, the order. You don't want me to apply the Q plus P by N value? You want me to apply feel comfortable? Q. Sure, but uh, I, uh, I don't need it. Uh, I would be more, uh, you know, with prefix sums, you need to find the person to kill. Okay, mm -hmm. that can be order n also. Uh, mm -hmm. But okay, I got you that you are going to do it in log n, the find to kill. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you are going and uh, updating prefix sums. And the second mm -hmm. one is query, you know, order mm -hmm. one. So if you can do those two, then we are good. Okay, take it. Can you stop sharing your Yes, I'll just stop sharing my screen now. So I'm going to code in C++ as I had. Okay, uh, so suppose I already have the accumulated prefix sum right now. I can just to use one accumulate. The accumulate there is uh, one more uh, STL that will do it itself. Okay, it will calculate the prefix sum itself. I don't know what was it called. One second, partial sum. So I can just use the partial sum and it will calculate by itself. Okay. 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 That sounds good. Okay. Uh, so you want me to perform the queries, right? So I'm just going to not return anything, okay, for now. I'm just writing a function, so perform query. And suppose I have the uh, vector, which is the uh, calculated prefix sum itself, okay? So prefix sum of, I like people, so maybe we can say, Alive people till now, like I don't know. Alive people count. <laughs> okay, I am keeping. Okay, I am trying to keep it sensible, but also not keep the name very big. Okay, and uh, so uh, I just need this, and I need the query. So my query, as you said, so uh, it will again be a vector of integers, uh, and if. The query is of type one, basically. Okay. So if query is of, so the first index, like if the first input in the query is one, then I will say it is a quick kill. Okay. If it is two, then there will be two other things, which will be L and R, right? That is how you told the input will be, right? Right. Yes. Right. So vector of end query. And uh, I also need n and i need k that's it Maybe. yes that's it okay uh okay so 
for say q in query okay if uh, q size is one basically if it is uh, query number one okay then uh, i have to kill okay otherwise i have to basically this will mean that i have to kill and this will mean that it's a range query all right and here the size will be three and uh, q of one and q of two will give me l and r right yeah okay. uh so now uh since this one is very simple uh, range let's do this first okay uh so i just have to return okay give me one second active people counter will be of size n only right yep that should not change uh so i can just see out that number of people alive in uh q of one to basically q of two r okay so uh it will be alive people counter of q of two minus alive people counter of q of one does that make sense yeah yeah um are there people counter uh, at q of 1 uh, is it at q of 1 or so from uh, 0 1 2 right so q of 0 meant that it is uh, it will be this that it is the second type query then there will be uh, no i'm i'm just wondering uh, this is left and right you have q2 yes. is left uh, q2 is right oh oh okay sorry sorry so so this will be q1 minus q2 You're right. So it will be R minus L. No, I I think you had that right. Uh, Q two minus Q one was correct. Uh, I'm more concerned about. I mean, this is a small change. Uh, in a prefix sum, you, if you need to find the range between left and right, you get L uh, right minus. Okay, you're saying Q of one minus one. It should be uh, one second. Um, so I am storing number of people alive. till that point right so the number of people ha huh, right you are right so if q of 1 is greater than 0 then it will be q of 1 minus 1 otherwise it will be 0 cool yeah this is good Okay, I should have thought of that myself. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, so we have covered the range query. Now let's kill a person. Okay. Uh, this will be order of n as we had discussed because we have to update all of them. Okay. And also, mm, I'm just thinking. Do I have to do? Just give me one minute to. Oh, structure my thoughts okay so in this do i have to do anything other than just update the all the alive counters no i don't so in this i you will just send uh, okay i uh, i am not keeping track of which was the last person i killed right from there i have to move k i am not taken care of that so uh always the sort passing starts from uh uh first person right so i need another uh, count like another sort of uh, that okay this was the last person killed right so the last kill which will be equal to or let's say to be killed 
yeah to be killed is one idea you can also have a sword pointer uh, whichever you are more comfortable with yeah uh wait so the first person to kill is not first it, it will kill the fourth person first yeah okay. if k equal to 3 yes oh okay okay uh so yeah let's sword owner okay so it is one and uh, uh now sword owner has to go to k places and then kill the next person and then that person will have the sword owner now right so the four <laughs> So if fourth is getting killed, fourth will be the sword owner now, right? Uh, no, the fourth person gets killed, and the fifth person becomes the sword owner. Okay, so I have to update that also. Now and then K from fifth, right? Yes, K from fifth. K the person alive from fifth. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. Huh. So, uh. i will start from let's keep it very simple okay from i equal to uh, let's go from sword owner and till uh, till i plus sword owner is less than k i plus plus okay and i will also put like if uh, If sword owner is equal to n minus one, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Uh, can you say that again? No, I didn't say anything actually. Kitty, can you say something now? अरे बात कर रहा भाई. Yes, I can say something. Yes. हाँ, okay. I was just checking if my headphones are okay. Okay. हाँ. <laughs> It's getting to start, huh? Okay. The yes, sword owner is uh, n minus one. No, if i becomes n minus one, then i will just make i equal to zero. So it takes care of the circular thing. Okay. 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 Uh, one second. So I'm thinking i plus sword owner is less than k. Instead of that, let's just keep it simple, huh? Let's keep another. Counter equal to why inside this? Let's keep this as counter equal to one, and let's say. So do you want counter equal to one, or do you want counter equal to zero? Maybe. Hmm. Zero. I was about to write counter less than equal to k. Same thing. Okay. Ah, huh. counter less than k. And uh, I equal to n minus one. It will just set i. So I am just keeping it clean, not making it confusing. That okay, i is just taking care of that, and uh, counter is taking care of counter. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, if I'm not going to type it again and again. If people of i, uh, I check the edge cases. Okay. If this is equal to I minus one. Okay. Then I'm just going to continue. I'm not going to do anything. Okay. Okay. Because I don't have to update my counter, and my I will just go on, right? Yeah. Uh, Kithi, uh, line number ten. If I equal to equal to n minus one, then you're setting I equal to zero. So aren't you by mistake skipping the n minus one? Yeah, n minus one. Uh, I was thinking that should I. Put this first, or should I put this first? This could be the check in the end. Um, I'm just wondering, like, okay, the, 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 there's a couple of things here. Uh, I equal to n minus one. Problem. If it is i, if i is equal to n, I can just put it as. Yeah, one. that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Uh, now, if I like people count it as equal, if it is same, so I can just skip it. I don't have to do anything. Okay. Otherwise, uh, okay. I'll also okay. Else, I'll do a counter plus plus. I was thinking if maybe I can put the counter uh, here itself, but I don't have to increment it always. Only if the person was like there was an alive person over there. Only then I make the counter. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Only if they are alive, then you are increasing the counter. Uh, and finally, uh, till it is less than. This thing so okay. 
So um, there needs to be a way in which you can tell that this is I. Hmm. So maybe you so, define int I outside. Yes. Yes. I actually don't need this at all. Okay. Right. Now what I do is now uh so now my eye points to the person whom I have to kill. Right? So now for int i equal to i equal to i let's take another one j i j less than n minus one j plus plus i just do so i have killed that person from there i have killed one person for all of them and that's pretty much it right yeah uh, maybe a few couple of this is this is good uh, everyone is getting updated the sword owner uh, do you want to update the sword owner also huh yeah right i i was thinking that i'm missing something and i had that in mind and then i missed it okay that can't do, do such things in interview can i no no that, that's fine uh, the sword owner uh, is changing to okay i plus one. so i'm killing the ith person right so i plus one is can i dry run it once to be sure that i'm going to the correct time sure sure yeah yeah no i i would probably suggest 17 line number 17 just look at that sword owner becomes the next person yeah the next alive person the next alive person okay right right by alive while alive <laughs> Okay, this is yeah. No, I think you you have that right. Yeah, while uh, alive people counter. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. While alive people counter of I is not equal to I minus one. So one second, let me think about that. Uh, so I have to basically skip. All the people who are dead, right? So should I start from I or should I start from I plus one? One second. So I at one I have killed. I should not care about that, right? So I should care about people ahead of I. People ahead of I. So if I plus one is not equal to I, I'll just do this, and I'll just do X plus here. Yeah. Okay, now there is one thing though. All the people ahead of I, like I was standing here, I said that uh, three people, including me. Okay, uh, the circle thing that uh, I have reached the end. Now I have to go back. That also have to take care of there. Not that. Uh, oh, there is like you kill me, mm -hmm. including me. Three people are ahead of me. So the next person you go to, he says, yeah, three people are ahead of me. Instead, it should become two. Oh no! Wait. Wait, how many people are alive? Prefix sum is telling you how many people are alive to the left hand side of you. Yeah. So everyone on the right should get updated. So yeah, sword owner. Probably you can go on incrementing sword owner. Maybe I doesn't need to be incremented here. But I, I think yeah, you have basically got the overall uh, Thing, right maybe a yeah. couple of test cases or actually i'm incrementing i so this will also have the problem which i should not do so i should just go ahead. So Kirti, how are you feeling uh, like after the interview? I did a lot of mess ups in the code at least. Like the logic and all is fine, but I think the code I I wasn't handling the uh, edge cases or anything because I guess 
the timer over there uh, it really messes you up so yeah no i think it was a involved solution in the sense that initially you came up with a solution and then i asked you to optimize it uh, only for problem solving so you had a couple of optimizations um so it's fine yeah in the time for coding uh, i think in general there were a few off by one errors so uh, one or two is is totally fine uh, they were happening like a little uh, quite a bit so that's why i have given a 4 uh, out of 5 mm-hmm. but still the code there was no like logical a uh, clear mistake like big issues or you know something unreadable or something so i found it to be fine uh, problem solving i think was excellent i think you were able to pick up hints very quickly you also had solutions in the back of your head but you uh, because they are involved solutions you didn't want to go there i think is that the case yeah yeah like segmentary or something like that like uh, you don't expect in an interview so that's why you were a little reluctant to throw big data structures around Uh, which i think is the right approach you are you are trying for something simple as long as it's possible okay i knew it would be segmentary but i knew i wouldn't be able to write the entire code like in the time that we had so i was uh, and i mentioned it also that i am trying to come up with some sql approach uh, maybe uh, a lot of people might say that it's not the right thing to do but that's what i did in the interview and also for the code part to be honest like uh, after we discussed the segmentary wala part i had this thing going in my head that you know may what should what else should i have i mentioned so even while writing code that was going on in my head and i couldn't like clear uh, my head and just focus on the code so that i did wrong yeah okay so one uh, maybe if you're practicing for interviews that might help uh, whatever has happened 5 minutes ago is gone is gone forever okay. so uh, like even in the in any competition or, or any any uh, you know test what happened 5 minutes ago whatever happened with that question is gone but uh, otherwise i i didn't really find it affecting you so much i think your coding uh, is either practiced or highly skilled because of which you were able to get the the large part of the solution totally fine uh, communication again i found it to be very good actually uh, i have given a 4 it's probably more like 4.5 uh, the only thing was when you started to code that time you started asking me something about initial conditions like what happens with the sword uh, who's going to you know after death who's going to get the sword so yeah right which is i think initially you did clarify your requirements clear communication that's why i mentioned those once you started coding maybe you were not in the state uh, of mind to remember everything earlier so this is one possible place where again i just dogged off one point to be on the safer side as an interviewer so i think what went wrong over there was that i i wasn't noting down the requirements you were sharing your screen you were noting down them for me right which is but this is not what usually happens in the interview maybe if i was writing them down i i would have written and since you were explaining and we went on like that so i didn't have it written and We, uh, the diagram was not open right so i did not have like uh, at that time i was like how okay these are the things that i can uh, figure out later also because it seemed fine that okay is this what passed on to the next person or not is not such a big thing like until you're really coding right uh, it does not matter the uh, solution or the approach so much so i was like ha theek hai but while coding i realized okay i don't have the diagram to look to and i haven't written it down so yeah that was the problem I, i think that is uh, you're right you're absolutely right that's the standard way you you actually note down requirements uh, in the coding section itself so maybe a 5 here will be more more sensible no uh, no i'm just i'm not <laughs> no no I, i'm i'm not i know you're not haggling for uh, scores here but what what i'm telling you is the objective uh, way to evaluate this would probably be a 5 from my side um looking at the overall score uh, if you can just go a little higher up yeah it's it's 4.33 it's probably going to be something like 4.5 i would definitely give a strong higher here because communication skills were good coding again was good uh, and uh, problem solving was excellent so uh, checks off all the boxes so yeah congratulations well done thank you <laughs>